is Howie Lee, CEO and founder of USG Fight Gear. At USG Fight Gear, we take extreme pride in what we do to ensure you with the highest quality of custom designed fight gear and with your day-to-day -day training gear. Because of our prestige quality, our boxing gloves and MMA gloves have been approved by the Athletic Commission. Our vision and mission is simple, is to provide all fighters, pro or amateur, with the safety and affordability so that everyone can enjoy and experience our USG brand. So don't stop training, don't stop believing, and don't stop till you reach the top. Be unstoppable with USG Fight Gear. Welcome back to the Final Shot Podcast. Today the podcast is brought to you by Puck Support. Mental health and addiction are extremely difficult issues to cope with or even talk about, and they shouldn't be. The Puck Support team is committed to raising awareness and ending the stigma surrounding the hard-hitting topics that constantly get swept under the rug. Puck Support is a player, or if you're a player, or a coach, a hockey parent, it doesn't matter. You can get a hold of them, and they'll help you through whatever, whatever the hell's going on. You guys go to PuckSupport.com. This is, a, this is like a non-profit thing, guys. So you go there, they got hoodies. I'm wearing their hat, I'm wearing their hoodie. They got a whole bunch of stuff on there you can buy. All the proceeds get donated to the cause. So hit them up, it's PuckSupport.com. Use the promo code FINALSHOT and you'll save some money on your purchase. We're also brought to you by USG Canada. I'm gonna link my guy up that's on the show today with USG, I think, because they make some of the finest boxing walkout gear in the game all this stuff is printed in into the fabric so there's no patches there's no bullshit that's on your clothes it doesn't weigh you down while you're doing your thing so uh, usg canada use the promo code the final shot and you'll save 20 percent on your purchase and always we're always brought to you by on it so if you're not on it get on it at onit.com forward slash tfs podcast and save 10 percent on your purchase kettlebells battle ropes maces elk bars protein powder alpha brain it doesn't matter you want it on it's got it hit them up on it.com forward slash tfs podcast last but not least ladies and gentlemen sovereign extracts if you like to get high as fuck or if you want to use thc or cbd as healing instead of an advil a tylenol or any of that crap hit up sovereign extracts it will be on the usg website when that uh, launches and you'll be able to use the promo code the final shot and save some money on your purchase. Now to my guest, ladies and gentlemen, he is seven and zero and ready to go. It's the boss, Josh Wagner. How's it going, man? Going good, man. Thanks for uh, for having me on. Um, I wanted to have you on right after the fight, but I wasn't too sure how the boxing landscape was going to look after that especially with COVID going on, and I didn't want to start hyping something that couldn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, 100%. 100%. So I got sick of waiting. I just said, fuck it, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we got some good news coming up here. So the last fight was two and a half months ago. We fought uh, Rafael Cortez, he's 8-0. Uh, I had the Tiger manager, so we went to Quebec to his hometown got the win six round unanimous decision so i wanted to get the knockout i wanted to get to keep the knockouts going but it was my first fight back in five years so i mean there wasn't much ring rust i felt pretty sharp but i've watched the fight a bunch of times now and and uh going forward i definitely want to sit down on my punches and, and put the boys to sleep so that fight got, wasn't uh, that fight wasn't even close though it was uh it was a one-sided beating and you were swinging the hammer man well, it was funny because all the commentating was in French. So watching it, I a guy that I knew was French. He's like, "Yeah, they weren't saying anything bad about you, but they definitely weren't. Uh, they weren't happy about it." So it was it was definitely an upset. I think I was the underdog for sure, but in my mind, I knew I came to win, and I I knew what I what, what I was there to do. So we got the job done. So you're 28 years old now. You started your boxing career in 2013 and you were fairly active right up until September of 2015. And then you fell off the planet. Yeah, man. So um, to be honest with you, 20 years old, I moved out West. I'm originally from uh, Orangeville, Ontario, about an hour north of Toronto. Uh, I had 59 amateur fights. I fought on team Canada as a junior and then I won two silvers as a senior 
Uh, and then 2013, I moved out west and I met up with Milan and Mel of KO Boxing. And I had six pro fights within, I think, two years. And uh, to be honest, man, then I just started being an idiot and started partying and just started hanging around the wrong people and, and uh, kind of fell off that way, to be honest. But uh, five years went by. It was a pretty rough time, man. Pretty negative lit lifestyle I was living. Um, but you know what? I'm blessed to have an amazing family and support system who kind of pulled me out of it and helped me find my, my fire again for boxing. And, you know, now that I've conquered that, uh, I'm over a year sober and I've been training like a machine this past year. I was blessed to get a fight. We got the win. So everyone kind of knows I'm back on the market now. Um, coming up forward, I actually have two opportunities. We're kind of in the mix right now. Um, I can't really say names just because it's kind of in the works. But uh, they're big opportunities for me and we're only moving ahead. We're not taking easy fights. We want to keep moving forward. So, um, and also I just found out, um, I'm sure everyone knows about Custio Clayton. He's a 2012 mm -hmm. Olympian. He's 18 and 18 and 0 and one. He just had a draw with that Russian in the States, but, um, everything's in the works right now. Nothing's hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. We're going to get brought down for, uh, for some sparring for a few weeks and, uh, be in training camp with him. So I think he has an upcoming fight too, which is exciting for uh boxing canada but yeah man big things big things are coming i'm 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 pumped so initially mel mel had contacted me and she said oh i got a guy that's coming back he's gonna fight he's been off for five years i was like okay let's see what this fucking kid's yeah. got you're throwing <laughs> yeah. him right into the fire the guy the guy you fought's no joke and yeah and so I watched the fight and I was like, holy shit, this kid didn't take a half a second off or it lo at least it looks like he didn't. Thanks, man. I pre and you know what's funny, man? So not many people know this, only me and my coach, because like COVID, there was 20 people in the, rent in the, in the venue, which is, it was definitely different. It was definitely a different environment. But uh, so the referee, before the fight happened, you know, everyone's like, oh, Josh Wagner, five years. Why the five-year layoff? Five-year layoff. They're all, you're going to be rusty, right? They're all, that's what they're all thinking, right? So the referee comes up uh, in the fourth round. He's like, are you sure you haven't fought in five years? And we're just, we're just laughing. We knew in the gym, I'm sharp. I have a great team. I have amazing sparring. We knew we were on point. We knew, we knew we were there to win. Everyone thought, okay, what's going to happen here? It's five years. But people that were in the gym with me knew what was coming. Well, so The fight for me was really fun to watch because it looked like you're actually having a great time in there. You're hooting and hollering when the round's over. You're doing the Ric Flair woo at the end of the fight. And Mel called me after the fight, and she's like, what would you think? I, I said, hey, the kid can fight. He's got personality. If you do it right, you got a star on your hand. I appreciate that, man. And you know what? Even if you're in the gym with me and people that train with me and people that know me in my personal life, boxing is my passion. And when I'm in the gym, I'm motivating people. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't try to do it in a cocky way. I'm not a cocky guy. I'm very humble. Life you know, life has humbled me and I don't, that's just who I am as a person. But when I'm in the gym, I'm doing that. Woo. And I'm, I'm slick. And I, you know, I don't know. It's exciting. I like, I like to be exciting. I want people to, to continue to watch me and want to watch me. And that's just how I am. You know, some people might see it like, Oh, this guy's, he's got his hands down. He's being a little cocky, but you know, that's just how I am. And I'm more slick that way. I fight better. I'm more comfortable and more confident. So that's just, that's just how I am as a, inside and outside of the ring, you know? Well, when you're in there, you got to you got to be yourself. You can't pretend to be somebody else. Right. So if if singing a song or humming a melody or being Ric Flair is what makes you comfortable, then that's what you do. And hey, it made for it made for it fun to watch because you could hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Well, especially because there was no crowd. So <laughs> everyone was just loving it, too. When I was like, Woo! And people were they were definitely loving it. You know, it's just I, I want to be an exciting fighter. I want. I want to bring the excitement and you could even tell before, uh, before the fight, you know, they weren't, they didn't know who I was. And when I walked into the press conference and then when I walked into the weigh-in, they could definitely, I have a, I have a very high energy, high intensity. That's just, that's who I am as a human being. And I think when they see the way in, I, I was ripped. I was probably yeah. the most ripped on the show. And I think they kind of knew, Oh shit. Like, <laughs> the trouble came, now. <laughs> he came to fight, you know, he's not here to, to, to lay down so 
that fight card that you fought on was stacked too, except for the first fight of the night with that fucking cocksucker Jay Bird. I don't like that guy. Oh yeah. So the main event, Ulysses. Yeah. Um, me and him actually have a pass. So I won juniors. I won uh, nationals on Team Canada, and then that was as a junior. I was seventeen. So when I was eighteen, I fought Ulysses in the finals. We I lost by like two points. Yeah. And then the next year, I I met him again in the finals. And I mean, I only have 10 losses on my, on my amateur record and, you know, two of them are to him. And so when he turned now that I see, and he's doing amazing as a pro, so I, yeah. it's awesome to see. So I, when I seen him there at the show, I hadn't seen him in so long and it's kind of like, Oh, what's up, man. Good to see you. You know, fighters have that uh, natural respect for each other. You know, it's nice. Well, you had Ulysses, you had G time, uh, Steve Claggett, and uh, Tay Ru, the the final four guys that were fighting were all fantastic. Yeah, and well, Steve Clegg, it's actually he's he's actually not just a trainer, but he's a good buddy of mine. Like he, so he fought my brother as a pro, and it was a great fight. Ended up stopping my brother with a body shot in the fifth or sixth round. And you know, so when I moved out west, I used to go spar him, and it was always this little, you know, he beat my brother up. So never hostility, but when you're sparring a guy, you want to kind of pick it up on him, right? But he, he's a beast, man. He, he, nothing, he comes forward every round, gets stronger and stronger, but we grew to have a relationship and he's actually like, he's a good brother of mine and he's a good uh, role model for me to look up to. So uh, Steve, I, I actually, I was just in, I was just in Edmonton for a visit and then I went to Calgary for the weekend and I got rounds in with him kind oh, of nice. just me and him. No one's really allowed to be in the gym. So we had to do, no one could really, it was just me and him. So that was, <laughs> Yeah, there's not much we can do right now. All the everything's messed up, so hopefully this all gets cleared up sooner than later. Yeah, Steve's been a guest on this show. I don't even know how many times. He's actually a guest of the year winner on here. Um, we're oh, pretty yeah. close. We talk all the time, but he's just a he's a good dude in general. He's awesome, man. He's awesome. He's just he's good vibes all around, man. He's he's good and he's he's a beast. Whenever like, he's the best sparring you can get. So if you want to get pushed for ten rounds straight, he's your yeah. guy to go to. So when I see a performance that you pulled off at the Eye of the Tiger show, my brain starts going, and I'm like, okay, what the fuck are we supposed to do with this guy when we have a lockdown? Nothing's happening because realistically, you're only as good as your last performance, but if your performance was fucking six years ago, we don't know. So 100%. we don't, we can't sit on you for the, for too much longer before we, you got to get back in there and do some work. Right. And then how do you and promote it and how you get the name out? It's a weird time. It's you're, you're hundred percent. Right. So right now um, we do have a couple things, like I said before, uh, but yeah, me, my coach, um, KO boxing, we're all on the same page where it's, we need to be as active as possible. And they, but we've all had talks and they, I told them, listen, I, I understand you need fights to build, but if I'm ready to fight and I'm ready to fight anyone. So the next, these two opportunities that I have, uh, they'll, they're going to be announced hopefully sooner than later, but um, it's definitely going to be a boost in the ratings for me. So we're not taking a step back I, and I plan on doing big things. I, uh, like I said, there was a five-year hiatus, but I, I was definitely a prospect to be reckoned with at the beginning. And now that I'm older and I've, the things I've gone through, I've grown up def a lot as a human being. And you're going to see that in the ring because I've just, I've learned a lot and I've grown up. I'm not a kid anymore. And I'm, and I'm here to, I have a mission and I'm, I'm, I'm doing it now. So it's exciting, man. I'm excited for it. So you're in Ontario now. Do you have any plans to move to Alberta to, to get work in or just to go live there? Or are you just you're going to stay where you're at? Um, to be honest, man, um, this past year, I moved out. So Milan, who is Mel's um, father, he has always, he's like a father figure to me. When I first moved out there, he took me under his wing. He said, we're doing this. You're going to be a world champion. He, was, he, he believed in me. And then when I messed everything up, he kind of shook his head off. Uh, the kids, he, you know what I mean? He's still a kid. He hasn't mm -hmm. learned. He's got to, he's got to grow up still. And then when I came back, you know, everyone wrote me off and they're like, no, where'd you go? Who are you kind of thing? Right. And he said, and Milan said, you know, if you get your head right, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a second chance. And so when I moved out at the beginning of 2020, 
it was just, and I'm not going to lie, man. I, I went through a really rough time and I actually, I went to rehab and I got help. And, and as soon as I got out of there, I went right to Edmonton, right to Milan. And it's crazy times, man. I was there for like a month and it's nuts, dude. The universe is wild because we were at the gym and it's we, the night before. So he went into a coma and the night before we were in the gym and I'm telling you, everything's meant to be. We just had this talk. It was a one-on-one. I'm sitting on the ring and he's just telling me I can be a champion and telling me what it takes. And just if I stay, and if I stay right on the track, everything's going to fall into place. And then boom, he, uh, he has a, he fell into a coma, had a heart attack and it was just kind of rocked everyone. And so when I had that last fight, it was just, I knew he was with me and I know he still is. And he was the only KO is the only one to have my back. And yeah, we're going to do big things, man. I remember getting the phone call that uh, Milan had had a heart attack and was in a coma. And uh, I've been to dinner with Milan. I've been to his house for dinner. He's interacted with my children, my wife. He's always a fantastic gentleman. It was like, what? I literally heard him in the background two days ago and he sounded fine. He said the F word. Yeah. And if you know Milan, man, he, he, you know, uh, he's, he's the best and he's the boxing godfather, you know, and I, he was, like I said, he was like a father to me. So that kind of rocked me. And like I said, I, I had a lot going on. I knew just, I had to stay on the right track. I knew that's what I had to do. And uh, I haven't looked back since. And so when I moved like back to what we were saying, I moved back to Ontario. Um, It's where my family is. Uh, I'm not going to lie there. It's a lot better training, um, better sparring. I find just more, there's just more people. There's more competition. There's more amateurs. There's just, there's more bodies here. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I, um, I hooked up with Dwight Frazier. Um, he is, he's an Olympian himself. He had seven pro fights. He's trained, uh, Troy Ross, Brian Mackey, his son, Josh Frazier, I train with now. He has 90 amateur fights. He's a Canadian national champion, Jamaican national champion. So he's a 2020 hopeful. So I got him for sparring. He's my weight. I got my boy, Jake Dayu. He's also from Orangeville. He's 1-0 and as a professional. He's four-time national champion. So that's the stable I'm training with right now. So it's it's top quality. Man. It's, it's the best you can kind of get around here. So. Well, a lot of but the time. To- I go back to visit. I, I, Alberta will always have a place in my heart, for sure, yeah. for sure. A lot of the times, uh, peop- the, the guys like you step in the ring, and we don't know fuck all about you. There's no backstory. It's just, hey, we're going to watch Josh beat the shit out of this guy. It sounds like the last five years has been an absolute shit show. It was, man. It, I, 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 I mean, I can talk about it now. I'm comfortable because of where I'm at now. Everything's, I've, like I said, I've grown yeah. as a human a lot in the past year. Everyone says, oh, 2020, worst year. For me, man, I had a great year. I had one of my best years in a long time. Like I said, I was, we don't have to get into details, but I was just, I was going down the bad, hanging around with bad people, just not doing good things, just not, no passion for life, just didn't care about anything, just living a very shitty, shitty lifestyle. Did something happen to you that this just happened or you just decided one day you're going to just go nuts? Uh, to be honest, man, it was probably a combination of things. Uh, maybe I just, I went six and oh, you know, I just thought I was the man at the time. I was 21 <laughs> years old. Um, my best friend at the time passed away. So, I mean, that kind of rocked me. Yeah. Um, just a combination of things, man. It just, I don't know. It just happened. It just happened. And then I just hard headed at the time. And I was like, oh, fuck, whatever. Like this is and just, that's just what happened. So whatever you came out on the other side better for it yeah buddy i'm and i'm blessed and i wouldn't take it back for anything I, everything i went through i'm happy i did because the person i am here today man is i'm i'm, I'm happy with myself and I, and I know where i'm headed and i have a mission and i have a path and it's it's looking good when you look at the 154 pound division that you compete in if i'm correct that is right right um, so last fight we fought at 152. Okay. We the next fight we're looking at probably 150. So oh. for titles we're gonna campaign at probably. I think I can make 47. Then. Okay. So I'm, when you I'm see, I'm walking around about one 160, 162 yeah. max. So. Oh, you can cut that. That's that's yeah. 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 So when you look at 147, what do you think? It's stacked, man. <laughs> yeah. That's the money. It's the money division. That's where you want to be, right? So. We just got to get a, we got to get some more fights under my belt, and I mean I want a world title by 30, 31. I got two years, 
three years to make a serious campaign here. And that's why uh, I got no time to waste. That's why me and my team, we're, we're, we're taking any opportunity that we can, that we can get right now. It's weird for all sports right now. We've got NHL back, which is amazing with no fans. We've got the NFL Super Bowl going on Sunday, which is tomorrow. This will be out next week, but whatever. I, we don't know the winner. Sorry, guys. But uh, <laughs> boxing and MMA, the combat sports are kind of weird. Where We've got the biggest organization in the world with the UFC, and then we've got uh, PCB and Showtime, and, and those guys all putting on shows with no fans. But the smaller shows – they can't go it's difficult right and that's why i mean i know for canadian boxers it's hard to kind of it's we rarely get on those shows but you know i think with my personality and my fighting style uh, a couple more fights and people will know i'm i'm the real deal and they, they'll know i'm i'm gonna do big things here well you i think right now it's still kind of oh okay he won the fight you know he beat a guy you know but people want to see more and and I know that, and I'm going to deliver. Well, you already got called up to what I would call the major leagues in Canadian boxing, which is Eye of the Tiger. They're hands down the biggest promotion here. Yeah. yeah. So, so that... Hey, one sec, buddy. I'm just, I'm just going to throw a sweater on here. I'm getting a little chilly here. One sec. Okay? All right. So while he's throwing a sweater, I can talk to you about one of my sponsors, I guess, that I didn't mention at the top of the show which is Fleshlight. You guys all know what a Fleshlight is. If you don't, now you do. It's a personal masturbation tool, which is awesome. Josh, do you need a, do you need a Fleshlight? I, you know what? I've never, I've never tried one of those. <laughs> hey, That's hilarious. If you need one, I can hook you up. Man, if, That's awesome. You know, you're going through training camp. You've, you got shipped away. Your, no, your girls that's it. around. I, I don't do none of that. I, I keep it all inside for training camp. <laughs> that's, part of, that's part of the game. Is so maybe it, maybe after one of the fights, we'll see, eh? We'll see. I'll send you one after your fight. You'll be all sweaty, smell like shit. You don't want to put that on your on your nuts. <laughs> well, guys, flashlight.com. Use the promo code Final Shot, and you'll save some money on your purchase. Um, Okay, so we'll we'll get into some little some hard hitting kind of boxing stuff right now a little bit. I find it hard hitting because it pisses me off a little bit. Um, Trilla, these YouTube boxers, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, all these guys getting in there and trying to trying to make money. What the hell's going on with this? Okay, so I mean, I think there's two sides here. There's there's one side that says, okay, you know, it's going to bring more viewers and more people into boxing, and, and that I I do agree with. But, you know, the people that they're bringing in, they think that this is real blood and guts boxing. They don't understand what true athletes and true professional fighters go through on a daily basis. Mm. And I mean, yeah, the guy came in and he fought Nate Robinson or whatever. But he's fought guys with no fights and now he's fighting this guy named Ben Askren, UFC, ex-UFC guy or something. And I mean, for what it is, yeah, it's, I don't know. I, once he fights someone that can actually fight, people will see he'll get exposed. But, yeah, it's a bit of a mockery to the sport. But uh, people want to see it, so they're going to – it is what it is. And after, like, Mayweather fighting Logan Paul and stuff, I don't know why he does. I know it's all for the money, but uh, I don't really agree with it. Well, the Mayweather-Logan Paul fight is not happening anymore. There was no interest in it, so they kiboshed it. So that's good news. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but – my my take on the on this YouTube stuff is if these if Trilla, which is Mike Tyson's company, if they had just said, listen, we're gonna let YouTube guys fight celebrities, we're not gonna call it, we're not gonna make it professional, we're not gonna let's not call it boxing. Let's just call it YouTube fighting. They're gonna get in there, they're gonna they want or a celebrity fight. showdown or something, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, that I agree with, but they're trying to, he's actually, when he goes online, he's like, I'm a true fighter and I'll knock you out. Oh, buddy, like, no, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, that's not how it works. Like, uh, It was funny because uh, Jake Paul went on Mike Tyson's podcast, Hot Boxing, and uh, he was yapping off Conor McGregor on there and Mike looks at him, he goes, you know that guy's not scared of you, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I seen that. Like, Jake, one. do you have any idea what that little Irish dude would do to you? It's yeah, and, and you know he's doing it for exposure. He's doing it for likes. He's doing it for views. I and I get that, but he, 
when he does fight someone that can fight, he's gonna get he's gonna get rocked, in my opinion. I think he's in trouble with Ben Askren. Me too, a hundred percent. But the thing is, Ben Askren has he had any boxing experience? Has he only had MMA experience? So, rundown on Ben Askren. Ben Askren's an Olympian for wrestling. He has zero boxing experience, but he has fought multiple times in MMA, a multiple-time world champion, fought guys like Robbie Lawler, who are heavy strikers, and was able to get to not get hit, which is amazing. Now, yeah. boxing has a little bit of a wrestling aspect to it when you get into the clinch. If he, can, if he can clinch up with Jake Paul for three rounds, that guy's going to get tired. Really tired. Really, really tired. tired. So, yeah. realistically, can he win? Yeah. I want Ben, personally, I want Jake Paul or Logan or Jake, whatever his name is. I want him to get knocked out. I want him to get KO'd. Yeah, sure. 100%. Yeah. But just, that's, I think that needs to happen. But who knows, man? It's in this crazy world, a puncher's chance, anyone gets hit in the chin, it is what it is, right? That's the thing with fighting. You don't know until you get binked in the chin. And, the <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, that's what people don't understand. Like, some guys can take a real big shot, but I don't care how tough you are. If you get hit on the money shot, like, you're good. Like, see you later, right? It is what it is. The biggest part of this YouTube Trilla stuff is Mike Tyson's behind it, which Mike is my favorite boxer of all time. He was colorful and he murdered people. But now it's starting to get a little dicey for me being a mike tyson fan because now you're kind of tarnishing the sport that you kind of laid groundwork for right well what i didn't like about that whole they tried to make it seem like it was a real fight and then yeah. in the interview after the fight is what got me is when they both got their hand raised and they're, they're the guy asked oh are you happy with the decision it's all it, obviously it was all planned and that's what i kind of didn't like but you know, they're, they're two legends trying to make a dollar, and it is what it is. Dude, I'm a, I'm a huge boxing fan. If Mike Tyson just said, comes out and says, listen, Roy Jones Jr. and I are going to spar. The pay-per-view is going to be twenty nine ninety nine. Bitch, I'm yeah. paying for it. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I'm with you on that one. So if event, you, the one fight that will happen is if Evander Holyfield decides he's going to fight Mike Tyson. That'll be a fist fight. Well, that's not a good idea for Tyson. Um, no. I think Holyfield at this point would uh, would rock him. I don't Have think... Seen... I've seen videos of Holyfield sparring. Yeah. I know it was a few years back, but he was sparring Andy Ruiz. Yep. And he, he was like 57 years old at the time. He's probably older now, but man, he still had it. And he was still throwing bombs. Unfortunately for Evander Holyfield, I don't think he would ever get sanctioned to do something where he would get hit in the head anymore. He has a personal handler now that handles a lot of business. The CTE's kicking in, so yeah, yeah. he probably should have. In that sense, it's not a good idea. Why? Why even? Why even put yourself in harm's way at that point? You know, it doesn't make sense. Plus, it's Mike Tyson, so if he does hit you, it's gonna suck. Oh, hundred percent, man. <laughs> have you seen him? Even. Holy, his training videos. At first, when they first started saying, oh, he's going to, I was like, okay, we'll see. And then I started watching the videos. I'm, oh, frig, man. He's, okay. He's he's up to something. He's still got some, some gas in the tank. I wouldn't say go out and fight uh, uh, Deontay Wilder, but if you want to come back and you want to make a, an actual legends only league where we're dusting the dirt off of these 50 year olds, have <laughs> at her. I'll pay you. I think that would be I think that would be awesome, but they should either they should pick. It's either gonna be real fighting or you just say it's an exhibition. One hundred percent. And let's leave the YouTubers at home, the basketball players at home, the fucking Lamar Odom at home. Listen, you drunk fuck. Don't get yeah. in the boxing ring, you're gonna get killed. Well, it, like you said, if if they wanna do that, just do it, but make it a celebrity event. You don't yeah. gotta try and you don't gotta make be on the undercard. And put Badoo Jack on and make it seem like it's a real card. You oh. know, you can't be doing that. I watched that Badoo Jack fight and I was like, "That this... guy was tough. My. That guy was Ooh. tough, man." <laughs> oh, a, he was took a, a beating, beat down, but yeah. he didn't go he out. Had, he's an army soldier. He had like, I think he had no amateur experience. He was, I think he was undefeated as a pro. Probably fought all tomato cans, but that guy could take a beating. 
but why is he fighting Badu Jack, who's legit? Who knows, man? That yeah. that's where either they're trying to get a filler fight, or I think maybe Badu Jack might fight Pascal again. I think that might have been in the talks. That's a that good would fight. Be, would, yeah, I'd like to see that. That's a that's a real good fight. The the bit another issue I have is is this kind of stuff gets more traction than what's going on that's real. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think that if you look at the big fights, like if you look at the Lomachenkos versus Teofimos, those are still crushing numbers. Yeah. Those are still the real boxing numbers. Those are the real boxing fans. Those are the people who know, you know, when you got Fury fighting, that's when you, you got real boxing fans. When you got, you know, Golovkin or I know he's on his way out, but when you got Canelo or people know when there's real boxing. And I don't know if this Manny Pacquiao or Ryan Garcia fight's actually legit. But uh, that's a sweet fight. I want to see it. <laughs> it's a sweet fight for Manny Pacquiao. That you know, that's a big fight, man. That's. But what weight? What weight are they fighting now? Are they fight at forty-seven? Are they fighting at forty? Like, what? What are they doing? Who knows? I wanted to see Ryan Garcia fight Tank Davis and have have Tank derail Junior De La Hoya. That's what. That's I what think would happen. Tank, tank runs that division, in, in my opinion. I, tank versus Lopez is a sick fight, though. But Ooh. I think, I think Haney's sick. It's a sick division, but I still think Tank, he's a beast, man. I don't think anybody wants to fight Teofimo Lopez right now. Well, no, look what he just did. Right? He, right? he made it, he made that look easy, man. I, I was really surprised with that fight, and I, I'm surprised Lomachenko didn't kind of turn it up, which I thought he was going to do later in the later in the fight, but uh, he didn't. And Lopez fought his fight, man, and he deserved that win. I think 135 is just too big for Lomachenko. Like, Lopez is a beast at that weight. He's huge. Like, huge. How are you huge. supposed to turn it up after round seven when the guy's been beating the shit out of you? And he's not tired because you're way smaller than him, right? Yeah. So You can't push him around. You can't bully him. You, you get into a clinch with him, you're going to end up in the corner. What do you do? I want to see, uh, see Tank versus Haney. Ooh, that's I think fight. that I think that's a tricky fight because I think that's one of the trickier ones for Tank. That's that's a real good fight. The yeah. the fight I'm most excited for is going to be Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. Are they? I really hope they make that happen. It needs to happen soon because I think Tyson Fury outs Anthony Joshua for the, for what he actually is. So so wait, say that again. You think you think I think Tyson. Fury- I, I think Fury wins that fight, and I think he's going to out Joshua for what he is. I think he annihilates him. I think he's going to expose Joshua. Yeah. I love – but I'm a huge Fury fan. I'm a Fury fan, man. Like, that guy, me and him have – I mean, I don't want to say we've been through the same stuff, but, like, when I see his videos, I know he went through some dark times. and I don't know. He's a huge fan of mine, and just his ring presence, just the way he is in and out of the ring, I really, I really admire. So I love him. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. So when he fought Deontay Wilder the first time, that shot in the 12th round, do you think Anthony Joshua gets up from that shot? No way, dude. No <laughs> way. That I've so me and my fam like me and my sister, she's a, she's a huge huge fan of mine and me and her are super close and we talk about that fight all the time like you know, the ref's at 5, he's sleeping, he's out cold, like anyone would have usually waved that off. All of a sudden the guy's eyes open up, he gets up not only does he start jumping around, he, he wins the he wins the rest of the round. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. That guy's a, he's something else, man. That guy's he's made of something else for sure. Well, I was watching I, it live. Joshua fight, I, I think he stops him. I think he. Oh, yeah. I think he stops Joshua. In my opinion. I was watching that fight live, and he sat up. I was like, "Oh shit, he's the Undertaker." <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! It's 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 nuts, man. I started laughing because I was like, "This." That that fight should have been over. You see Wilder start jumping around. He's oh yeah. Everyone would have thought it was over, right? And then all of a sudden, boom! His eyes opened up, and he just like like he never even got dropped. His legs weren't even shaking. Well, rumor has it that Deontay Wilder is going to fight Dillian White next. Um, Deontay kind of ran himself through the ringer with the media stuff, with the gloves and the back of the head, and then all the the excuses for losing the fight. Like, Nobody hates you for losing the fight, man. Yeah, I don't know. 
at the first when the glove thing came out, I started watching it. I was like, okay, it does there's some parts that look a little bit sketchy, but then he started saying about the weighted vest and about this and that, and then it got a bit too much. So I think you know he should have just taken the loss and and just kind of been more humble about it. And then I think he would have got another opportunity. I think the fact that he was all this and that, yeah, I think Fuji's kind of like, no man, you, you know you're. You're, you're done now. I, I clearly beat you the first time. I get, and the second time, I, I clearly rocked you. I knocked you out. You know what I mean? Like I said, I would. So, well, there's no need for a third fight, in my opinion. I think he's definitely shown that there's he kills him every time. Yeah, there's no there's no reason for a third fight. But no. when you throw on the Empire State Building to walk out and you have legs the size of chopsticks, do you really think that that's a good idea? Well, and you know what I said too. You, you know, you know what you're wearing out. You've tried it on. Yeah. Like, as fighters, you, you, you're putting your stuff on, looking in the mirror. Like that's what we do. So you can't say you didn't know how heavy it was. You know what I mean? You can't. You, you don't fuck yeah. up. That stuff like that does affect the fight. And I'm sorry, but your team should have figured that out. Maybe you're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but you should have smart people surrounding you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, it makes sense, exactly. right? <laughs> you think so for but sure what do you what do you do you just he's got to move on the anthony joshua fight has to happen the title unification has to happen and then we figure out who the baddest man on the planet is i think we're going to see some sweet fights near the end of this year i hope so i hope i hope stuff starts opening up and, and we see some real good i'd like to see some canadian stuff start firing back up i've been picking fights online with for people Fucking like, let's get her done yeah. And as for the no fans, I, I mean, I, I really hope they get fans back. The sport yeah. needs it. Um, but as a fighter, and now that I've experienced a fight with this whole COVID stuff, um, I feed off the fans. I, But the thing is, I adapt, too. I knew what I was walking into. And in my in my case, it actually helped me out because I was in Buddy's hometown. Yeah. So when you're fighting in someone's hometown, every time you land a punch, there's nothing. The guy lands a jab on your gloves and the crowd goes wild, right? So yeah. that was kind of neutralized a little bit, which was good. But, you know, I, I miss the fans. I want the fans. I, I love I love the energy. That's why, I, that's why I do this. I always enjoyed getting booed. Is that weird? <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. I've been – so I, when I fought – I think the first time I experienced that is when I fought in, uh, in Ireland. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was Canadian champion. I was fighting the Irish champ in his hometown. It was, I was 17. It was, it was a wild experience. And, you know, they, they say your name and it's just booze, like booze, <laughs> like you've never heard before. And then when I got the win, it was, you know, I'm pumped. I go out to the crowd. And I'm like, ah, and there's just, they're looking at you like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's yeah. all, it's fun though, especially when you can come in and wreck a whole bunch of people's days. That's. That's uh, that's kind of satisfying in a way. Yeah. There we go. You're back now. You, some crazy Germans must have hacked. Oh, did I cut out there? Yeah, I think the Russians hacked in, and I've had problems with Russians on this show before, where they hack my shit and try to stop it. Oh, are you serious? No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh man, this is the real. This is the real deal. Hey, holy. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, Ryan Ford, you know, who Ryan Ford is obviously he's one of the biggest names. Oh, yeah, he, he's a good, he's a good friend of mine, man. We, we've, we've, we've got rounds in and he, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Man. So he went over to Siberia to fight. And uh, so I talked to him when he was on the train going on the plane, we did a Facebook live and all this shit. I got a lot of hate from Russian people about doing those because i was obviously shitting on their guy because i've known ryan for almost 20 years now we're former training partners i used to help him get ready for fights and so we the the event comes on and all of a sudden it goes dead and nobody can watch it nobody in in north america can watch it like what in the fuck so i went and i got on the computer because i needed to see this fight because i thought ryan was going to just dummy this guy which he did and got a raw decision but Anyway, I ended up like ha- hacking a Russian satellite to get the fight and then broadcast it on Facebook Live. I had like 15,000 people watching it. That's awesome. And yeah, then- he was telling me some of his stories uh, when he goes over there. Um, and Ryan, I mean, he's the real deal. He's no joke. They call him the real deal for a reason. 
um, in and out of the ring. That guy's awesome. So yeah. he was telling me when he went there and he got robbed, you know, the situation he was in, he's like, man, I've been in some crazy situations, but these were ones where you just kind of, you're not getting, you just, okay, it is what it is. Yeah. You're going home, happy to get home kind of thing. You know what I mean? Give me so, my cash and let me go. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's exactly it. But, but yeah, that guy, is, man, that guy, I, I hope to see him fight soon. Um, he's a beast, man, in and out of the ring. I heard there was talks about him and Riziki. I think that'd be a crazy fight to see. I think everyone wants to see that. But I know, I think there's a bit of a weight difference. I don't really know what, I think the, there was some money problems or I don't, I don't really know the whole deal, but I know they are two weight classes different. So I'm not, but that would be a cool fight to see, man. I'd like to see it. It's an interesting fight. Uh, Riziki's a cruiserweight, so 200 plus, and, and Ford's a 168er. He's fought cruiserweight before, guys like Gary Copas and Rob Nichols. But uh, you're going to have to open up the, you're going to have to back a Brinks truck up to get that fight to happen. That's 15 grand. Let's get her done. Well, that's, that's, right? yeah, exactly. that's, that's a big weight difference, man. I know Ryan doesn't back down from anyone. So, but he's also, he's a prize fighter. He's not going to get, he's not going to get lowballed, right? It is what no. it is. But there's, there's definitely some but interesting fights. I want to see him fight. I, Go ahead. Well, I seen. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I think he uh, he made a post saying, you know, he'll do MMA, boxing. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. he's just a true. He's an all-out fighter. That's just, that's just that's who he is, man. Like, and I've trained with him. I've done rounds with him. I've been in the gym with him. The guy's he's just a great guy. Yeah, just an overall family guy. Loves his kids. His wife is always up at the crack, yeah, yeah. Ass crack of dawn, taking his kids to school and. Hey, it's more than I can do. I got to work a full-time job, right? If I could, I would, but yeah, he just, yeah. there's no rest for that guy. He's just go, 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 go. And him and I are the same age. I can't do a quarter of the shit that he's doing. Well, and that's, and that's just it. Like, you know, some people say, Oh, how long are you going to fight for? And man, however long you think you can, then that guy, he's a beast. Like he's, he hasn't, he hasn't slowed down. You know, I think he's what, 38. Yeah, 38 years old. Yeah, you go to the gym with him, you know, you it's like you're training with a, with a 25-year-old. There's no he's – he's a beast. He, and he pushes the tempo because I think he knows he has to kind of double up the work to, 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 to keep up, and he yeah. does, and it shows. So, I, yeah, I hope he gets a fight soon. Man. I told him a couple months ago, I said, I'm pretty sure – We'll both be 68 years old and you'll be punching the shit out of 20 year olds still. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome. That's it, awesome. It's, uh, yeah, man. Uh, he actually, cause like, you know, when I was coming back and he's, he's awesome with sponsors and he's awesome with promoting himself and, and things like that. So, you know, I've reached out to him and just kind of picking his brain, just, just to see what, you know what I mean? Cause he's very successful in that sense. And he's, he knows the game. He's been around, he's been around the game for a while and, you know, um, I actually, and I'm blessed now. I, you know, I have a team. I don't have to work. I'm getting uh, all my bills paid. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm, I can focus. Uh, and that's why I believe in the next couple of years, people are definitely going to see uh, the boss on the big scene, not just in uh, Canada. So tell me about this hat you're wearing. That's your brother's company, right? Yeah, so um, we started a company, uh, Main Event Boxing. Um, it's just kind of my friend. Um, so, so eventually, uh, you know, I, I would love to put on a show in my hometown and it would be under Main Event, uh, things like that. And in my sponsorships, it's pretty much like my, it's, it's my brand. So. Um, eventually, we're going to have a website. We're going to have sweaters, T-shirts, uh, the whole nine. Uh, everything's kind of just in the beginning stages right now. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Main Event Boxing. Uh, you can check it out on Instagram, uh, Main Event Boxing. Um, maybe we have a page there. Everything's still kind of fresh, but uh, you can guarantee that once... Because I know when I have a fight, you know, I made T-shirts for the last fights and they go quick. So I want to get something where it's... Uh, it's a forever thing, you know, we keep going. All right, we're yeah, up. Yeah, main event boxing. Make sure, make sure everyone yeah. checks that out. Well, 
Josh, we're up at the hour mark. Let's wrap this fucker up. You got anything last you want to say? Um, honestly, man, uh, just thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, Josh, the boss, Wagner, 7-0, five knockouts. Uh, you can definitely uh, be sure to see me uh, on the big stage soon. Uh, 28 years old. Um, I want titles. I'm training my ass off, and uh, I'm not scared to fight anyone. So, Josh, the boss, remember the name. You're going to see some big things soon. All Thanks right. for having me on, man. I really, I really appreciate it, dude. Oh, thank you very much for coming on and making the time. Uh, Camille Estevan, work something yeah. out with KO Boxing and, and Josh. Get him on the show. Uh, I got a bet for you that he can beat the brakes off of any one of your guys in that weight class. If I'm wrong, I'll show up and do commentary for free on my own dime. That's my bet. Guys, that's the final shot. <laughs>